Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on steps you can take to secure a small office home office network. Today we're going to be talking about security methods that are common to both wired and wireless networks, how to secure a wireless network, and then some steps that you can take to secure your wired network. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. We begin by talking about some aspects of security that are common to both wireless and wired networks. Now, whether wired or wireless, you should have some security in place. And that security, it is up to you to enable. Equipment manufacturers are in the business of selling networking equipment. And it's easier to sell it if it's easier to set up. What that means is that as a default, most equipment does not come with security enabled. So it is up to you to enable that security. Part of what that means is that you should always change default usernames and passwords. The defaults are easy to find out and that makes your network unsecure. If an attacker can gain entrance to the administrative level of a network, then it's no longer your network. You might want to consider enabling MAC filtering. That's media access control. That's because each node theoretically has a unique MAC address. MAC filtering means that you put in the MAC addresses for each authorized node. Filtering reduces the opportunity for unauthorized access. Now this is not a sure process as there are ways to spoof a MAC address. You can also assign static IP addresses as another method of securing a network. This makes it a little bit more difficult for an outside attacker to gain entrance if each node is assigned a specific IP address as opposed to relying upon DHCP. It does make it a little bit more difficult to manage the network, but it does make it that much more secure. And if you do assign static IP addresses, Make it your IP address. Don't use the default IP addressing scheme. Now let's move on to things that you can do to help secure a wireless network. The first item under discussion is changing the SSID, the service set identifier. That's the name of the network. It doesn't necessarily add to security in itself, but many default SSIDs are actually, is actually the model number of your WAP your wireless access point. Most WAPs have some weaknesses in them that can be exploited, so if an attacker knows what model you have, they might be able to exploit it easier. So change the SSID to something of your choosing. Another thing that you need to consider is your antenna and WAP placement. This also doesn't necessarily add to security in itself, but it can help. Now WAPs use radio broadcasts you need to make sure that it's in a central location and that it has the coverage that you need. But you don't want to put it somewhere where you're going to leak signals to an area that you don't want. So placement consideration is necessary. Along with that placement consideration is your radio power levels. How far does your signal reach? Do you, do you even know that? Can somebody sit outside in your parking lot or your driveway and hijack your signal. Most WAPs do allow for the adjustment of the power level for the radio. So you should check your perimeters to see how far your signal is actually going. Now the most important part of securing a wireless network is setting the encryption level. If you want to have a secure wireless network, then encryption needs to be in place you need to set it at the highest level that is supported by all machines. Now if that highest level is WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy, then you need to replace some equipment. Do not use WEP as your only encryption. It's been broken for a long time. You really should use WPA2 with AES as your encryption standard. Now let's move on to things that you can do to help secure a wired network. The first thing that you should do to secure a wired network is to disable any unused ports on your equipment. 
if an attacker can plug into a port and gain access to your wired network, you're sunk. It's no longer your network. Which also brings us to the next step, physical security of the equipment. You need to limit the physical access to the network switches and routers. You also need to limit physical access to wiring closets and punch down panels. If an attacker can easily get physical access to network equipment and wiring, then it's not really your network to control. Now that concludes this session on how to secure a small office, home office network. We talked about some security measures that you can take that are common to both wired and wireless networks. Then we talked about wireless network security. And then we briefly discussed some things that you could do to help secure your wired network. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session. And I'm sure we'll do some more soon.